Tonight, our two guests are well known, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. They are Terry and Linda Jameson, known internationally as the Psychic Twins, and they are the only twin psychics in the world, and yes, they are identical. So if I have an issue identifying Terry when I'm talking to Linda tonight, you do understand. The Psychic Twins are considered by many to be the most documented and accurate psychics working today. The Psychic Twins have been professional psychics for 20 years. Aside from their astonishing world predictions, the Jameson sisters have reunited families, helped solve murder cases, and find missing persons, save marriages, and diagnose illnesses using their unique gift of automatic writing. And that truly is a unique gift for as accurate as they are. The Psychic Twins have appeared on over 60 TV shows worldwide. In fact, by now, I believe it's on over 80 shows worldwide on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, TLC, a &E, Biography Channel, the, and Oprah Winfrey's Oxy Oxygen Network. <laughs> Excuse me, also. The Psychic Twins have starred in a dozen documentary films as well, including Psychic Children on A&E, Hollywood Ghost Stories on AMC, Twin Stories, Turner's, uh, Turner's Superstation, and Extreme Twins on Channel 5 in the UK. Terry and Linda Jameson are profiled in the 100 Top Psychics in America from Simon & Schuster, and the Book of Twins by Doubleday. The Psychic Twins reside in Los Angeles, California, where they have a private counseling practice for individuals and businesses all over the world. They are frequent guests on national TV and radio shows. And I want to tell you something fantastic about the Psychic Twins that most people that know about them uh, remember. And as you all know that Coast to Coast is a nationally syndicated show and it's a, it's a number one, it's kind of like the TV of radio shows hosted by George Nori. And when the Psychic Twins were on there, they made, they always make some incredible, incredible uh, predictions. So I want to tell you about their 911 prediction. The Psychic Twins did predict the simultaneous terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center towers and on Washington, D.C. by Bin Laden. Terry and Linda Jameson made this prediction to 20 million listeners on the Art Bell radio show, which is uh, Coast to Coast, Coast to Coast AM radio, in November of 1999. In an interview with the uh, renowned radio host, the tape of this interview is available for the uh, archives. You can still listen to it if you want on Premier Radio Network. While they primarily focus on psychic counseling for individuals and businesses, a sideline that they have become known for is world predictions, medical breakthroughs, national and natural disasters, the United States economy, the stock market, and so forth. Because they keep files on all predictions they write, the Psychic Twins were able to locate at least five different documents of their channeled writing, which specifically foretold these events for 2001. Now, I just want to say that they, they do a, a lot of predictions and a lot of writing, so I'm sure they have or must have a file system, especially since they are authors, which is uh, another topic I'd like to bring up briefly before we have them on. They have one book out published right now, which is a, a fantastic book because I've read it cover to cover myself and went back over certain points again and I found it to be uh, uh, just a wonderful book. I mean, this book brought me right into their lives and I felt as if I was living their lives. And it 
the experience they had in there are unbelievable. They went through an incredible journey, and their journey was not an easy one. And we all have problems on this earth, but it seems that at least on their journey, all the ups and downs, they never gave up. They kept moving forward. And I have to uh, hand it to them that part of the success not only stems from the gift, but from their perseverance of knowing that the future is going to be better. And if they did, what kind of psychics would they be anyway? And there's one more fantastic book coming out also that they have published already, but it won't be available until June. It's called Psychic Intelligence. And this will help you tune in and, and discover uh, the power of your intuition. If, if you ever want to know how they do it, they will show you in this incredible book. And we'll, we will be posting links up frequently in a chat room to this. <laughs> and their website is the uh, psychictwins.com. I hope I got that right. And they have a newsletter that comes out each month which is called the Future Scope, which I just read, and I recommend everybody get that. We're putting a link on that as well. There's so much to say and talk about them. Rather than giving them any more of an introduction, I'm going to go ahead and, and introduce you to Cheryl first. Bring her in. Cheryl, are you there? I am. Hello, everyone. Hello, all of our listeners and everyone in chat. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, and... Also, would like to welcome our guest. Thank Hi, David you, Cheryl. Hi, David Cheryl. Great Hello. to talk to you guys. Yes, it's wonderful for, to have you on the show tonight. Thank you for joining us and all the many oh, listeners. Well, it's our pleasure. We went through an interdimensional portal to be here with you both tonight. Yeah, talk about beyond the gate. I think we broke <laughs> through the gate, and uh, we may have to fix the lock on it now, but okay. uh, we blasted through it. <laughs> as long as you're here. <laughs> you're here. Thank you ready. so much for the beautiful, honoring introduction. Uh, you're precious, very precious to us. Well, you know, you deserve it. Uh, you've done so much for people. That's one of the things I want to focus on, you know. You have a truly good gift that really helps uh, an uncounted numbers of people all around the world, not just here. And for the fact that you're able to be uh, in the area to where you can get the word out to many people to help them and show people that there is another side to life besides the material and that there is love, light, and hope out there and mm -hmm. that trusting our natural gifts that we have you know, you've done a lot to uh, show that, and we all trust you and love you for that. And so we're very happy to have you here. That's very kind to say, David. Thank you. And right. back at you, you're one of the uh, Earth Angels, too, helping helping with this whole process of our Earth evolving. And spiritually, we're, you know, we feel like you are definitely helping as well to break down the walls between science and spirituality and helping to create a bridge of understanding for people. And we appreciate... Uh, our fellow Earth Angels, as you both are. Well, thank you very much. Did you hear that, Sherelle? I did. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes. I call her my little angel anyway, so that's, you know, one of the nicknames. So, uh, wow. uh, <laughs> uh, but, so we have a lot to ask you tonight. Um, can I start yeah. with something that has already been spoke about? And it, it's, about the 9-11 uh, uh, incident where you predicted it on the radio in 1999. That's right, November 2nd, 1999, and it is on tape. Um, that, you know, it's interesting that Coast to Coast actually replayed our interview with Art Bell back in December, just a few weeks ago. They replayed it out of nowhere. It took them 11 years <laughs> to replay yeah. That interview, and I thought, what's wrong with them that it took that long? But we were just happy that, that people now know that we're not lying about being the only psychics that predicted 9-11 on tape. We feel there's a lot of resistance, don't you, both uh, resistance to receiving this level of work because it's just so uncommon. It's very unusual. 
And I think it's hard for people at the state of evolution they're in to really, really get that we can do this and that eventually other people will be able to do this. You know, it's funny, uh, David, but for um, Nostradamus even said uh, that for a long time my work was not understood or accepted, but it was ignored. And ours was very much ignored for the first 20 years that we worked. Uh, but he said, he went on to say in his, in his quatrains uh, that in 500 years from my time on Earth, and he was in, he lived in the 1500s, I think it was the 1540s and 50s, uh, he said in 500 years from my time on Earth, in that new millennium, a great clarity will come about. And through my legacy, mankind's happiness will prevail. And we feel like we've been kind of chosen to help usher in that era that, he, that Nostradamus spoke about, 500 years following his, uh, his time. Yes, that's totally amazing. There's been some amazing predictions by him as well. And, you know, there's a few people in history that stand out, and it goes back beyond, as we spoke before, the Oracle of Delphi in Greece. Yes. Uh, yes. Since mankind has been here, it's my belief that let's just take a caveman. There's no uh, technology. There's no schools, so, you know, his intelligent side of his brain is working to a degree, but he doesn't, he's not texting, relying on vehicles or computers or anything else. Right. So he's out there in the wild and he walks, he's looking for food and he, he gets a, this feeling that overcomes him immediately and he turns around and sees a saber tooth tiger in a tree just in time to save himself. Sure. So that's how people tapped in and trusted totally before technology came in. Right. Does that make sense to you? Yes, and that's been lost, right? I mean, we've we've lost that uh, contact with the broader knowing, you know, with that higher knowing. The omens, the signs in nature, we actually write about this in our new book, David, Psychic Intelligence, which is coming out. It's actually out on Amazon. You can order it on Amazon. I think you said you'd order two copies. Bless your heart. Thank you for that. Uh, and it is actually coming out in bookstores in June. Uh, but we do talk about that very thing where... You know, um, it was sort of like as common as emailing is today, uh, psychic being able to do telepathy with other cavemen and, you know, aborigines. Uh, it was a very common thing. And then it was lost, and we explain how it was lost historically in our book, why it was suppressed and those gifts were lost and suppressed. Mainly the church tried to suppress the gifts that women especially had, and they were labeled witches, and they were tortured and killed and burned right. at the stake. And... That's sad. It's sad, but it had to go through that evolution. This kind of work had to be tried in sort of a crucible in that sort of way. Uh, I think it's just everything cyclical, and again, they just were not receptive, could not deal with that level of, of uh, spirituality. Yes, I know and it, some of it has to do with control, because if everybody progressed and we're all in love, and everything would be open and honest, so you have to have some going the other direction to... Very much about control, yes. Yeah, and, and additionally, that they, people before those times, the early humans, did trust that because they didn't have anybody to tell them that it couldn't be so. It, and I know it's authentic because I happen to pick up thoughts from the wife or other people many times, and I know you do as well, so... Is starting to come back, and I think that we're in, in a paradigm shift, as a lot of us have been saying, that perhaps, you know, the age of Aquarius is time for us now to start waking us back up again. What do you think about that? Absolutely. You know, we are not going to blow up in 2012. You know, everybody says we're no. going to, but... <laughs> I was going to ask you about that, too, but since you brought it up... Do that. <laughs> that's what I've been saying, too, you know... We had uh, 765 AD, 1870, the year 2000, Y2K. So now we got 2012. Now we have scholars saying that, oh, it could be as little as 13 years off or as much as 70 years off. Nobody knows for sure. And that's not what the calendar was made for. It's not a doomsday machine. 
That's right. No, the Mayans never predicted anything sinister. They did not predict that that would be the end of the world, 2012. There's so much misinformation, isn't there? And Edgar Casey even said that the world would be ending, I At, think, in uh, the 1990s, 95 yeah. or something like that. Yes. And, wow. Yeah. His greatest work was not as a prophet, obviously. <laughs> he was more a medical intuitive, Casey. Uh, but a lot of predictions are attributed to, to Casey that really just didn't happen. Yes, like That's the Atlantis prediction and so forth, and the Hall of Records. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's amazing. Now, just to be on, on the humorous side, because, you no, know, I don't want people to be all, well, what's going to happen in 2012? I did post a little cartoon I found on Facebook. I loved it. I saw it. <laughs> that yeah, was really funny. Basically, it's uh, two minds. And one of them had just chiseled the Mayan calendar, and he <laughs> takes it to his associate and says, "I'm finished with the calendar. Uh, I'm sorry, I only had enough room to go up to 2012 on it." And the other <laughs> person says, "Oh boy, that's going to freak somebody out someday." Oh, well, that was a great <laughs> cartoon. I love so that. clever. And yeah, that's um, my idea. I'm not worried about 2012. I tell people that if something's going to happen in 2012, we're not right. I'll let you know in 2013, either from here or from heaven. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I always think that they just ran out of materials to make the next calendar. That's what I always thought. <laughs> That's probably true. They couldn't find you a know. slate big enough. Or... <laughs> right. The wife says, go find the slate. I can't find it. I can't find it. Well, okay, let's just finish this. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a very easy explanation. It's funny how it's human nature to add significance to everything. And I think there's a danger to that. There's a danger in adding all this meaning and significance where it just isn't warranted. Oh, yeah, well, for instance, Mr. Domus, he probably didn't predict half the things that are attributed to him. He didn't predict 9 11. No, he did not. That was a fake. Yeah, uh, that, was a, yeah, that was a fake or a fraud, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, in 500 years later, who's going to verify it? You know, they can't <laughs> understand the quatrains anyway. Yes, that's and true. You came along and described it precisely, that it could be nothing other than what exactly had happened, and that's what's astonishing about it. But, you know, you you uh, work together, and you also work with spirit, and you do all night writing. Do you mind if I ask you a little bit about your method? Not at all. Oh, yeah. We love talking about the automatic writing. Well, do you have, uh, I'm sure you have, you know, each of you have your own specialized guide that's, you know, bringing forth the information through your gifts, you know, and um, incredible gifts you have. So do you just, like, think of or ask a question and the information starts coming through, or how does yes, that work? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, we're asking a lot of questions all at once in our mind, mentally. We're asking many, many questions of our spirit guides. It's sort of like multitasking. We're really good at multitasking, and I don't know whether it's because we're Capricorn with Gemini rising or not, but we can really multitask. Well, it, so. We call it multidimensional multitasking. <laughs> Where we're literally going into in other dimensions, we'll sit down and we'll have meditated or chanted about a certain person that we're about to read. And then we'll both sit down and our hands will start to write and we'll ask, uh, well, what is a significant area of focus for this person? Why are they blocked? What happened? And then the, the spirit guides will write trauma, age five, molestation, never dealt with it terrible problems with parents who left, abandonment issues, and it will we'll just be writing page after page of information. This is before a person even calls us for a reading. We've written two pages of very detailed, specific guidance and information. Yes, so when yeah. we do world prophecy, um, it's really hard because it takes so much time and focus and energy, and then it's almost like a full-time job following up on all the predictions during the year that I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to continue it because we have so many TV projects we're working on now and books that, uh, you know, we may not be able to do a lot of prophecy after this year. Not not much. We will be doing some, of course, and I'm sure because we've got some big TV shows scheduled for the coming year. Can't tell you which ones because that would be a surprise. But uh, we will be probably asked to do some prediction on these programs, and that will be inescapable, unavoidable. 
you know, people expect us to do a little bit of that every time we're on TV, and we, we can hardly say no. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's going to become less and less um, time for it, the, the automatic writing. We have so many file cabinets full of it, David and Sherelle. We've, like never thrown any of our writing away in like 20, 20 years, years 20, 20 years of writing we're really really addicted to, to writing wow. it's definitely a you know a compulsion almost we actually went to uh two teachers from stomstead england to try to cure ourselves of automatic writing because it was such a habit and they tried the dependency to, on it yeah. yeah they tried to cure us but it didn't work <laughs> that's amazing that's that's a blessing that they didn't cure. <laughs> right. Cure. It was like Dr. Strangelove where literally the teacher would get me in a bear hug to keep me from writing in the air while I was doing meetings. That's funny. Well, it is. Yeah. Oh, so funny. Yes, so many stories that, that you have. And in your uh, book, Separated at Earth, you do have many wonderful stories in there that are true, and it's amazing. And, and it's all true. Thank it you, is. David. It's all true. It's all true. We, we had actually had to tone it down. We had a lot of other stories in there. We didn't want it to be too. <laughs> we, we edited quite a bit out, but hopefully, when it's republished, uh, we'll we'll be able to put some of that back in. Yeah. Okay. Um, but thank you. Sure. And, and your book is wonderful too. I, I look forward to reading your next book. Yes, we know you're going to be Me coming too. out with another one. Oh, I can't hide anything book. from you. <laughs> I think maybe 2012 is the year to publish it. Ooh, Ooh. there you go. 2012. I'm waiting. You're waiting. I'm waiting for you. (laughs) Yeah, I'm working on two books. And Sherelle, did you hear they said you too? Oh, I didn't hear that. Sherelle, I really feel that. That was my guy. (laughs) I feel that you should. I feel you should write too, Sherelle. I feel you're quite good at writing and you need to trust yourself more. I keep hearing your guys are saying, she doesn't trust herself enough. I know. They, they, it's like when they have that little nagging thing, they just keep doing it to me. But my, I guess my whole thing is that this is David's show. So I've been trying to encourage him to get his second. And my mom saw that he had a third and a fourth book out. But, you know, he's like going around in this little circle because he's so busy with other things that we're trying to, like, reroute him back to writing his book, too, so... Yes, I, I focus on one book, yeah. Yes. One book at a time. Why do I keep writing Lillian for you, Cheryl? Lillian. That name does sound familiar, and I, I just drew a blank the moment you said it. It was... I'm having <laughs> that amnesia. Yeah. I'm put on the spot. <laughs> amnesia. I feel like it could be a, a spirit guy for you. And, and David, I was hearing the name Richard around you for some reason. Okay. Write that down. It could be a spirit helper or it could be somebody coming in to help you in the future. All right, that makes sense. And Archangel Michael, we both saw being wrong with both of you. You won't believe how much I use Archangel Michael. Really? Oh, yeah. No surprise. We do, too. We do, too, all the time, the blue light. Yes, I feel like you have. You guys have a pack of archangels and guides. Uh, you're just so, so, uh, you know, angelic. Your light is very bright blue, I feel. I'm also getting Gabrielle, Gabriella. Mm. I think for you, Cheryl. Uh, oh, for me? Yeah, okay. another guy, okay. Gabriella. Mm. Okay. Because I definitely, I, I thought that was David's, but, um, and, of course, I... Definitely have Archangel Michael. He's yeah. been uh, helping me out a lot, a lot. Oh. So. Oh, yeah. I keep hearing the two Marys, and I've never gotten that before. Two Marys, and I think Mother Mary being one of them. Do you know the other one I'm talking about? Uh, I'm not sure myself about the other Marys possibility in the family. Yeah, in the family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do have uh, a Mary in a family that's alive and then may have one that's deceased also. Yeah, I keep hearing two married. Hmm. Now, I did a reading for a person and I saw a spirit that looked like a queen from a profile and turned out to be Mother Mary. (laughs) The first time it ever happened to me, but I don't know if it was one of those. Yeah, I did that at the uh, the next school. I had a booth there. 
few years back. Very interesting. Oh, you're good at that. You're very good with the uh, the expos and that stuff. I I admire that. I usually get too exhausted doing those things. Terry and I, we're on the floor after just a few readings. People really pull on your energy, right? Yeah, I get you get drained after a while. Oh, yes, but you have a lot of a lot of strength and stamina. You can do them probably more than we can. We really, we really reserve uh, a lot. Just you know, we do a lot of private time because we need to recharge a lot. This work is not easy. People think it's easy, right? It really isn't. It's not easy, and mm -hmm. it, it does. It, it zaps you a lot of time, like you were saying. Um, even though he's he does do the expos when he comes home, he's just wiped out. And oh, I totally believe it. And but then it it it's true about cutting cords, uh, regrounding yourself, um, reconnecting, and um, just having making sure that you reground your grounding cord. And it's it's all of that. And that's why I feel a lot of times that this is this is his show, so I have to be more of a support to him. But I do, you know, he bounces off of me, but he's spending a lot of time trying to protect him, protect the room, protect the people that come to visit, and it, it, it's draining. It's draining. Oh, you yeah, both my know it's right? Yeah, and we warn people. We'll say, you know, if you keep doing so many readings every day, you're going to burn out, and they go, oh, no, that's not true. And within a month, they've given up psychic work because they're so exhausted, and they've burned out. Yes, it's totally authentic. It's energy that we're using, you know, and it's like, yes. you know, we can only have so much of a capacity, each person, and as you take that reserve of energy and it kind of burns down, you really don't have enough power to do anything else, and just because we can't see it, it doesn't mean it's not authentic. So I, right. I don't, I will never do readings every day. I'll do them on the weekends for right now because I'm busy. Anyway, and I only... Yeah, that's good. That's good to limit it. Yeah, I can't... Uh, so right now I limit three or six for one weekend, and that's yeah. it. Otherwise, Very I'm wiped good. out. Today, yeah. I, don't, I only did like three today, three short ones, because of the show good. tonight is too important, and I feel fine, thank God. Oh, good. Yeah, it's very different from doing, uh, just giving advice, you know, which doesn't really drain you. It's you're, you're literally stepping into someone else's energy field and managing it. And that can be extremely exhausted. Even if they're on the phone from another country, we could have a headache or a back pain or stomach ache or cramps. Yeah. We're totally anxious if they're anxious about something or totally depressed if they're depressed. And we'll pick up every single thing they're feeling just by connecting, you know. Really, it's very real, very intense. I have a question. Yes, sorry. When you're talking about grounding and reconnecting, when you go on the different shows, like you've been on several shows, on even television shows, do you feel that it is more intense when you're on television, or do you? More intense. Because you know, I know you've been on. Yes. Oh yes. There's hundreds of shows, and you know what? It's yes. so much harder because. Not only are we in a studio audience with maybe a couple hundred people in the audience, but the host is usually either competing with us or giving us a hard time. And then we're also dealing with the millions of viewers at home that, are, really there that are sending us energy or thinking about us or holding us in their vibration. So we are, it's, it's one of the hardest things that a psychic can do is TV work. And plus it has to be, you know, it has to play well and have no dead air and we have to we had to it took us many years to do this but we had to make a very quick four sound bites sound quick sound bites in ways that we could give readings without taking too long on T V and okay. it's, we got it down to a kind of a science but it's absolutely so true. It's so hard. And here we are doing you know solving murders and you know, on they have you do like fifteen or twenty different things all in one hour. Yeah, and talking and about somebody talking about wow. cheating and somebody else's father committed seven murders and she saw some of them. And, I mean, so if they throw so much at you and you don't even know what they're going to throw at you. So we're reading 20 or 30 people in the audience and they'll put maybe 20 of those on. But uh, you're one of the few to ever ask that, Cheryl, actually. Hmm. Very few people I'm have ever asked curious. that. Yes. Wow. 
Wow. Not easy, not easy at all. It's not. I can tell you from giving readings on the radio, hundreds of readings, yes. I found that I had, you know, so many callers, so much time. You know, I'm talking about in a guest capacity because I'm new at, at hosting here, but as a guest that there's a lot of people I can't take up so much time and over time I learn to refine it and abbreviate it and just bring out some important points, give lit advice, thank you for calling, bring it down and go on to the next. Yeah, little nuggets. That's easy compared to what you had to do in front of the cameras and a large audience. That's a real challenge. And this it shows how good you are. If you're a real psychic, yeah, if you're uh, a psychic, which you, know, you guys are, um, it's much harder because if you're just a fake psychic that's up there just tossing off answers, oh, yeah, you're going to dump the guy. And, you know, just really like McDonald's readings, we call them, real quickie things. <laughs> you know, if you do that, it's easy, that part's easy. But if, if you're a real psychic and you're really tuning in and you want to have the best result for the person, you want it to be a win-win for the person that's, that you're reading for. You're very invested in their getting something very powerful, valuable out of that reading, even if it's just 30 seconds you spend with that. Well, it's a huge responsibility when you think about it, and, and a fake psychic doesn't care. For them, it's not That's any true. responsibility at all. They yeah. don't care what happens. They don't care if the body's found. They don't care where the body is. <laughs> you know. But, you know, when, when you're a real psychic and you really care, it's extremely difficult work. Yeah, we take it on emotionally, and then... And then we suffer when people go online and on YouTube and say, oh, it's just frog, everybody's frog, like it's not real. It hurts because we have devoted our lives to this, uh, this work, and we take it very, very seriously, as you know. Uh, so when some just young kids just don't even look at the body of evidence and decide the years of sacrifice, what we've been through to get to this point, we're sort of, you know, we've been guides kind of ushering humanity through this dimension into this new portal, uh, this vortex of awareness. Uh, and it, people just sort of toss it off, the skeptics toss it off, oh, it's fraud, you know, and they don't know, they aren't, uh, it's not real, Tyra gave them the answers in advance. And, and you just go, oh, how can they? You know, why bother? Yeah, can you uh, remember uh, yeah. 360 uh, audience members and their stories? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. they, but they don't even tell you their stories before they ask us advice. There's no, but they, but skeptics will say, oh, they got the answers from Tyra before the show. We never even met these people. We didn't know their story. Yeah, yeah a lot of people that make uh, these type of nefarious statements, you know, it's okay to be skeptic, you know, be a skeptic. That's fine. But there are some, but most people that actually judge the work that we do, they haven't got. Uh, a reading from an authentic psychic, perhaps, no, they, or medium. Nor will they, nor will they. That's and they the haven't point. got any, didn't need to research either, so they really don't know what to right. talk about. They're, they're like, right. you know. That's a very everything. good point. It's, it's sort of like, very much like judging a religion if you don't oh, know anything yeah. about the religion. You've never done a research. Never been to the church, never studied it, or even talked to any. I, I really think it. this is the kind of work that it can't be judged unless you've really spent years researching it and getting readings from, you know, good psychics and, you know, uh, otherwise it could be, your viewpoint could be very skewed. Yeah, I feel that most of the skeptics are actually cynics. They don't want to be convinced and no amount of evidence will convince them because it's like a fanatical religion. They are so uh, committed and invested in being right that there's no magic in the world. That's true. They, they do believe that, but those those are a lot of times those same people that if they're looking at, you know, a UFO, it's like, oh, it's a weather balloon, it's not real. Or if same. they're looking at, it, yes, yes. And, same, but exactly. if, it, if it happens to them, and I find that this happens, you know, you have so many non-believers, but when something happens to them, they are the ones that are running around the rooftop shouting it because now they're a believer. Now, but it has now to be personal. personal. And experience, yeah, it has to be personal, yeah. right? It has to be personal. You know, exactly. yeah, it's kind of hard to yeah. interview Linda and Terry because I'm trying to think ahead of time some of the subjects we can reach or flow into. And every time we get into a subject, then the, the questions I'm going to ask, 
you guys answer the Meridi. Are you guys cheating on me or something or what? Well, that's so funny because people tell us that in reading they always say, oh, my God, you answered all my questions before I asked them. <laughs> we got the cliff notes from your spirit guides, David. Uh, I'm sure. That's so funny. Well, I mean, speaking of skeptics, it's, it's like the scientists, you know, uh, Dean Radin has actually uh, written a lot about this, and on his website, the scientist Dean Radin actually says that most scientists believe in the paranormal, but they can't admit it, mm -hmm. and you know how the, the scientists will come on and they'll act like, oh, it's just a lot of hoo-hoo, but, you know, I've noticed that no mathematical equation can actually capture the magic and miracles of life and birth and death. I've never seen a mathematical equation mm -hmm. that can capture what is so special about the universe. And and they're coming on like they know better. They have it all better figured than out. The spiritual people, or they're better than the psychics, or they have these mathematical equations. Because they have data. Right. And data is the ultimate proof of God, right? I don't think so. <laughs> Very good point, Terry. That's funny, but if the United States government doesn't like to talk about UFOs and they exist because of the giggle factor, then why did they uh, release information uh, about remote viewing, which are using United States military officers as sighting spies who have had a pretty good track record, so they kept the program up for years. And I forget the general's name. Some general was kidnapped in Italy, and they uh, actually were able to locate him and rescue him because of the remote viewing psychic spies. And we started it because Russia had it. So if that doesn't validate it, you know, besides... Yes. Oh, exactly. Yeah, and now they'll try to debunk it, you know, after the fact. I, I don't think there will ever be full disclosure by the government about aliens or UFOs. I don't no. think so either, and I don't think that they can, if they no. could, because it would be a disrupt too much on the earth, because we need to stay, you know, have some form of control, and I don't know what the total secret is, and I really don't care, as long as they don't invade us and everything's okay. I know it's really a bigger story, more to it than that, but, you know, I'm not an expert on it, even though I've been reading books on it, I find it to be very intriguing, and I will say that it is possible the uh, universe is infinite and so are dimensions and creatures and creations. So I say it's a possibility that we have visitors from either another dimension, time, or place. Yes. And I think even I read a scientific uh, article recently that said they're, they're finding many more billions of stars and planets in, in our solar system. And uh, they're saying that many of them are potentially like Earth even. So that's a new development. A lot of people thought Earth was the only planet of its kind, but how, how incredibly egocentric to assume such a thing. And quantum physics, that's another major breakthrough that's coming about. I love, I love right. studying quantum physics. I mean, I'm very okay, sure. Quantum physics. <laughs> Well, we don't okay. have to go into that. That's another subject. That's another conversation. <laughs> That's another show. Can we get you back for another show on quantum? <laughs> yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> we, we have a lot of a lot of shows we'll be doing around the launch of the book, Sherelle, uh, in May, April, May, and June. So I don't think we'll be able to book for quite a while. But but uh, yeah, let's let's try to do it again. And we you know what? to get into some predictions, too, before we say goodbye. That's, yeah, you did it again. I was just <laughs> going to say that you're not going to be doing predictions for a lot longer in the future, but tonight we're very fortunate to have, and I was just going to ask you, but you did it again to me, you know. <laughs> but I want to mention that your website is uh, psychictwins.com, and there's right. much information on their website. There's videos of them on the Today Show and Tyra Show and other links. They have their uh, newsletter, Future Scope, which is very informative. They always have predictions uh, in the newsletter and lots of interesting information. There's uh, links to the book, Psychic Intelligence and Separated at Earth, on their website. I have it posted on my website, Beyond the Game Radio. I have all the links there, the video, the Everything's there, 
Yeah, you're just been you're amazing. amazing. I wish all our radio people were as good at promoting as you are. <laughs> oh, thank wow. you very much. So having said that, uh, should I say, let's see what you guys have to say about uh, some predictions. Now, you've done medical predictions uh, pretty recently, and I've even read about them in your Futuroscope uh, newsletter. Yeah, so do you want to... Sure. So do you have any... Uh, predictions perhaps oh do you see any more terrorist attacks coming in the near future or anything of that nature we do i mean we don't see anything really big it's it's interesting because we were correct in the entire decade from uh 2000 to 2010 we said there would be no other major terrorist attack like 9-11 on that scale and we were right on u.s soil credit for things that don't happen when you're as like um <laughs> but we actually do feel that there will be some terrorist attacks that are thwarted this year. Um, for some reason, I'm seeing uh, Chicago. I, I just feel like Chicago is coming in, maybe a homegrown terrorism attack. We predicted the, uh, the incidents that just happened in Arizona and Michigan. In fact, uh, police officers were shot tonight in Detroit, which we predicted in Michigan. Um, and that that was sad news, unfortunately. But we're seeing something in England. Uh, it feels like the London area uh, terrorism. Uh, it feels like around the time of the royal wedding. It could be before. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a terror threat right in the London area. We're seeing Germany, France, and England will continue to be a hotbed of extremism this year. Uh, with a mass terror attack actually being plotted by extremist terror ring in Europe now for this year. Six or seven cities are targeted in Europe, and as you know, we predicted that last year and we were right. Um, we're seeing Pakistan and Yemen being in very high danger of terrorist attacks, yes. possible anthrax or biological terrorist plot thwarted in the U.S. within the next year or two. And... Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's terrorist cells in the Chicago area, in, in quite a few in the New York area, in Miami. But we're seeing something funky happening in Chicago this year uh, around one of the terror cells. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of deaths or anything. I'm also seeing something around JFK, New York City. Yes. The that. airport feels like JFK. And I want to say it's like April, May of this year. It could be April, May. Were you feeling anything like that, you guys? Yes. David, were you seeing that? Yes, most definitely. And uh, it's funny you should mention it. I usually don't do predictions, but on some of the radio shows, like the Joyce Keller show in New York, they always have me do predictions and so so I've done it you know like I got the price of gold and some other stuff so some lady thank you some lady that's a teacher in Chicago it's funny you should say that is doing a book about uh, psychics and mediums certain ones and she interviewed me and she asked me to make some predictions for this that are going to come true shortly so I predicted a uh, quake of certain magnitude near Japan, and I predicted some um, terrorist plots in England or somewhere around there. I forget the predictions I made, and days later they all came true. So, oh, you should, um, you should kind of develop that. Yeah, I, I don't do it a lot, but you know, and I'm not perfect. But well, uh, nobody, nobody is perfect. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But I'm amazed at, at yours. You do so many, you know, and. That's your gift amongst many gifts you have. Thank you. you know, I think a lot of it is that we've done it for so many years, 20 years, and when you do it every day and so focused, it becomes a little bit easier as you go along, and then you, when you hit, it gives you more confidence when you get a prediction right. And uh, yeah. so our confidence has developed over the years. But, you know, I think a lot of it is... Sometimes you'll, you'll be doing a prediction about something because you're asked or whatever, but some of the information may be hidden or changed or whatever because it's for the evolution of us on the earth, and that's why it's blocked. Or sometimes a person might misinterpret a sign or a symbol or is not feeling well that day or something. I don't know. What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I don't think we're supposed to know everything. No. 
uh, you know what I mean, or we would be yeah. gone. And right. so I absolutely right. agree. I don't think we're supposed to, for whatever reason, know every detail of uh, the future. No, not at all. I, and I think, you know, very often people say, well, why can't you stop? Why can't you stop the terrorist attack from happening? You, the twins, go and stop it. Go to Washington and stop it. Make a fuss. Well, that's kind of ridiculous to expect us not only to predict these things, but to literally go and physically stop it from happening. Like expecting Obama to go down to the bottom and clog the oil. Clog the well. Exactly. Clog the well. Stop. Yeah. Uh, right. We are, that's not our purpose, and I think that very often karma is meant to happen so that people learn and evolve spiritually. It's part of their destiny, and it's for whatever reason. Psychics aren't meant to see everything and, and uh, protect people from their own karmic experiences. And so, you know, we do what we can. When we do private readings, um, I think a lot of times people will expect us to be magicians and wave a magic wand and, and fix their marriage or fix their job situation, you know, but what we're doing is we're helping them to see the best options for themselves so they can then take the best measures to fix their lives, you know, and get back on track. Do you think, David? Yes. I think that, you know, we have free will, and we all have it in us to uh, facilitate certain things or make things uh, possible. And I think a lot of people just kind of give up and then expect you to give them the answer because you can give them advice that's very helpful to them things that you perhaps can see that they can't or they've forgotten about, but Mm -hmm. we can't walk their path. That's one thing that they have to understand. We can just give them a heads up on the future and it's up to them to act on it. Absolutely. We can't change their destiny for them. We cannot do the heavy lifting for them, although they may want us to. Uh, And that's just too bad. I mean, if I could do that, I'd charge about a million dollars an hour. (laughs) I I don't think that's enough. That's not enough. That's not enough. Can I ask you some, another question? Sure. About uh, predictions. It's about, you know, natural disasters for this coming year. Ah, good yeah, one. Natural? Natural disasters, like hurricanes well, we and floods. Uh, at least one or two big hurricanes. I'm seeing one in Florida, it feels like September of this year, a uh, pretty big hurricane. That's yeah, happening. Florida, there's one also in the Gulf of Mexico that's going to be do quite a bit of damage. Um, We're seeing a lot of flooding in the south this year and also the Midwest, so it'll be uh, southern Tennessee, states. it'll be the southern states, it'll be Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, mm-hmm. Kentucky, mm-hmm. in around there. Yes, and the Midwestern flooding. Um, what what else did we see? Uh, I was seeing uh, some pretty dramatic tornadoes as well in those areas. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, some flooding, but those are the, the states that I was seeing. We're not seeing any catastrophic earthquakes uh, in the California area. A lot of psychics are always uh, kind of saying, oh, there's a big earthquake, it's going to destroy California. And they've been saying it for years and years and years, but we kept saying, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen yet. And we're not seeing that for 2011. We're not seeing a catastrophic earthquake happening in the California area. Yes, there will be minor ones, as there always are. Uh, We are seeing uh, pretty big ones in um, Greece, Taiwan, and possibly China this year. We're seeing Mexico, South America and Mexico. Uh, Indonesia, there might be something, uh, and India we saw as well. We saw a terrorist attack in India coming this year. Um, we predicted the last two that happened there, and Pakistan. Well, that's very interesting. Now, on a lighter note, I'm sure some of the listeners would like to know about some of the fantastic predictions you made about the royal family. Uh, we predicted, uh, we were the only psychics, I think, that predicted that William and Kate would break up, which they did. It was a few months right after before that. Before yeah. they did break up. In 2007. It was at the Dr. Keith Ablo show, and 
we said, well, there's going to be a breakup with, you know, Kate and, and William. And they actually did break up for quite a while. It was several months later. It was quite a shock to the press because they already had been printing their China, you know, their pictures on the, the China. That's and funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they they really were going all out with the newspapers. We're a wedding imminent, and we said, nah, they're gonna break up, and they did. And we said he's not gonna marry till he's about twenty eight, twenty nine, and that's how old he is. So, uh, so we predicted his marriage. Yeah, as well, we I think that you know, I like to think that it's a forever and always marriage, but you know, it may not be. We're both given it about twelve years. Uh, there's something that's got. It's like something wrong in paradise. I think like eleven or twelve years, we're seeing some problems. Rocky road ahead. Uh, and they've already been together nine years, so we're seeing you know eleven, twelve more years. Uh, it could be quite, you know, quite a ways down the road, uh, and there is a possible separation and even a divorce for them. I hate to say it, but I think he's going to repeat oh. his father's uh, pattern there. Uh, pattern, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, everybody heard it here first on Beyond the Gate Radio. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I ask you, is there anything, there's just a couple more questions that I wanted to ask you about something that you already did, but first, sure. is there anything that you feel uh, that you guys are in your heart that you need to tell us about any other particular predictions that um, you wanted to talk about? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're, you know, we're concerned about the real estate crisis and the job market in our country, and everything is looking so dire, and we are seeing... Um, that China is really um, going to emerge as a major power by, you know, within maybe the next nine, ten years, um, mm. it's inevitable. And we feel like we're going to be the number two power in a China-dominated world pretty soon. Um, we do feel like the financial markets are going to stabilize late this year and in 2012. But I think it'll take several years, maybe three or four years, for real estate to pick up again and for jobs to pick up again. I think jobs are going to come back within a year and a half, two years. Start to come back. Come back. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, unemployment rate is going to stay high around 9% uh, through this year and possibly next year. Yeah, but China and India will be making important contributions in medicine and materials and uh, China is going to stay dominant in mass manufacturing, microelectronics, aerospace. Uh, I think India will be a rising power in design and technology and precision instruments. And uh, the U.S. It, it will remain a strong power, surely. Uh, we, we just see that uh, we, we are sort of too indebted to China now financially, and there were too many mistakes made. Um, by all you know, all the all the parties in the past uh, ten years, twenty years. So, I think there there was not enough foresight, and uh, they they just made major mistakes. So I don't see a huge recovery for the U.S. in terms of domination again, world domination. We also seeing uh, cyber attacks, uh, sophisticated plots to infiltrate electrical grids in U.S. and in Europe, and we were right about that the last two years, Absolutely. Uh, specifically naming the countries that were involved, and um, definitely an attack on fiber optics networks in the U.S. Uh, cities, Power and grid. the cascading impact on banking systems. Yeah, there'll be much, much more of that, cyber, cyber spies, this kind of thing. <laughs> wow. That makes know, they're, sense. They're, that's true, yes. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. so we, it's we don't because have enough, I'm sorry. We don't have enough policies in place uh, that you know Obama needs to really implement more policies to protect us against those kind of attacks. So that's going to be happening over the next two or three years too. That's well, it's amazing. Uh, I was going to say that yeah, that makes sense about you know especially about the fiber rock and cyber attacks and so forth, you know, there, there's much easier to do that now and can do a great deal of damage, perhaps even more so than any bomb can, especially oh. if they disrupt the financial markets or there's somebody, some network or something like that, including if they should penetrate the Pentagon or something like that, can do a lot of damage. 
and they can do that very easily, and uh, and they know it, you know, and the government knows it. So we're in trouble if they, you know, when they do it, because uh, well, WikiLeaks has already proven how there's, vulnerable we are. There's going to be a lot more of that kind of thing going more, on. Yeah, more WikiLeaks coming yeah. out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yes, I believe that. And that can only weaken our position, I think. But it's inevitable, you know, in the society we live in. And my goodness, you know, technology is growing in leaps and bounds, and nobody's really ready for it. Nobody's ready for the amount of growth we're seeing in technology. I know, look at Facebook, and you have over 12,000 fans already. And Facebook, oh, yeah. MySpace, and Twitter, you're all over the place. Uh, right, right. <laughs> yes, we do. And it's growing. We have a, a pretty big outreach at this point, but when the book comes out, it'll be, you know, so much more, we'll be able to reach so many more people with the TV show and so on. And you know, you reach a lot. We've seen you on Tyra, the wife of, oh, they're on Tyra, so we can run it out and look. But, you know, you're <laughs> really uh, high profile. You're the um, most accurate psychics in the world, at least that I know of. Thank and, you. Thank you. But yet, you are true. Uh, to what you teach and say, you are really down to earth angels. You are really uh, something that. And uh, I just want thank to say, you. that's sweet. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Uh, we're oh, starting to run out of time. Oh, it's we really so fast. Time goes by when you're having fun. It sure does. Uh, well, we uh, we love you guys and. Sure, appreciate your inviting us on the show, and good luck with Beyond the Gate, guys. Thank you. You're doing a great job for being so new to the rock. Thank you very, very much, Terry and Linda. God bless you. Thank you, David and Terrell. We'll be with you in the future. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Okay, honeys. Bye, bye. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Beyond the Gate Radio with David and Sherelle Baker. Thank you, everyone in the chat room and everyone that is listening online and uh, on the telephone. Thank you. You've been listening to Linda and Terry Jameson, the Psychic Twins. The um, You can find their website. We've posted it on the chat room if you're interested, or you can also get it by Beyond the Gate Radio and go to the link. We also like to thank you for listening.